Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about object oriented programming in PHP. You cannot really perform object oriented programming in PHP perfectly. I'll just leave it that way, but you can definitely perform kind of a knockoff version of what is called object oriented programming with PHP, and that's what I'm going to show you here over the next couple tutorials. Whenever you want to define a class, which is just a blueprint that is going to be used to define what all of the objects that it is used to create should look like, meaning what attributes or variables those objects should contain, and what functions or methods those objects should contain. Now, to create a class, and I'm going to do this kind of in a Sado code type of way. You start off with the name class, then you follow with the name of your class in uppercase letters. This is something that's normally different. Of course, you don't have to do this, but this is considered good practice. And then you would define certain variables. So let's say variable two. And all of the objects that you then create are going to automatically be assigned these variables. And I'm going to give you a bunch of real world examples here in a second. You would then use something called encapsulation to protect these variables. Now encapsulation lets you hide the code behind an interface of sorts so you can both protect the code and also so your users of your code do not need to understand the code you wrote. And then variables inside of PHP and most other programming languages that operate in any way using object-oriented programming principles are often given additional attributes, such as they are either public, private, or protected. And there's another one, actually there's two other ones that I'm going to cover in the next tutorial. What I mean by public, public means that, that anyone can access this information in this variable and make changes to it. I'm going to show you here examples. That whenever you define a variable as being public or an attribute as being public, that means you are allowing anybody to just step in here and change the value of this variable or get the value for this variable. Private is very restricted. The only way you can get access to a private variable is to literally set Ver one call a method or a function that is going to allow the person to define what this value is with a function that lies inside of the class. That's encapsulation. So then in this, for instance, what you would do is say variable one is equal to value passed. This helps in regards to encapsulation. And this is only for private and protected variables, not public. And also, a private variable is protected in regards to how well you can access or retrieve the value of the said variable. And it normally operates something like this. And then, of course, after you define all of the variables and functions that your object has, you are then going to close off the class. Okay. So now I'm going to create you a real world one. I just thought I'd do that real quick here so that you could understand the basics of, of this before I jump right into an example. So let's say I create a class called Animal. And by the way, protected I'll cover more in the next tutorial because it's a little bit more complicated. And then I'm going to define some variables inside of here. So say that all my animals are going to have names. They're all going to have an age which we're going to protect. And for now, they are not going to have any protected variables. It's also static variables and constants, which we'll get more into in the next part of the tutorial. OK, so I've created name and I've created age. I told you before you can directly access name, so I don't have to create set functions for it. But I do need to create a set function for both age and get age. And for people to be able to access these functions, I'm going to have to make these functions public. So I'm going to create this and make that public. And of course, you have to come in here and type in function, function. And instead of this, I'm going to call this sent age. And age here is actually going to be changed by referring to this, followed by a minus sign and any closing caret brace. This is referring to the object. This is a direct reference to the actual object itself. And then this is a reference to the variable called age inside of the object. And we're going to create an object here in a minute. And to save time, I'm going to copy this and paste this in there. And anytime you want to refer to variables inside of objects, you have to use the this keyword. I'm going to come in here and type this again, dash and closing caret brace followed by age. Okay, so all this is going to work now. So now we got this basic class created, this animal class. So now I'm going to actually create the object. So let's say I create an object called dog is equal to, and then you would always type new, followed by the name of your class and close that off. Then I'm going to say 
that I want my dog object name to be equal to Rover. And then I'm going to create a variable called dog name and I'm going to assign it the value of dog dash name like this. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating an object of type dog of the class animal. Here I'm assigning a value to the public attribute name which is up here. See, I can do that because this is a public variable. You would not be able to do this same thing with age. That would throw an error. And then I'm retrieving the value from the public attribute name. So this is how you would retrieve values if they are public inside of PHP. And this is how you would set values inside of PHP using object-oriented principles. So you might say, well, how do I set the age? Well, here I'm going to call dog dash caret. And I'm going to call the function that resides inside of there. And now age is actually going to be equal to 8. And normally whenever you create these functions, there really wouldn't be any point of creating them at all if you didn't have certain error handling to make sure that the values that are being sent are actually proper values. So for example, if somebody sent a string or a Boolean value or something, that wouldn't make any sense for this. So I would definitely provide certain error handling, but this is just an example. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. And then what I'm going to do is echo out to the screen the dog's name is dog name dot close that off and I'm also going to echo to screen the dog's age is dog and I'm going to call for the get age function and I'm going to come in here and copy this and paste it in here and if we run this code I'm going to file save jump over here you can see dog's name is Grover see and that's what's coming from this line and the dog's age is eight so here I just specifically just called for the function that I referenced up here. I could actually put this guy right here in there, but I just chose to keep that separate. And this is how you call for functions inside of PHP using object-oriented principles. Now you could also come in here and create things called constant variables. And it's just going to have the same number every time. So let's say all these animals are associated with a pound ID where they're located, two, three, four, five, and let's say that that's it. This is always going to be the same for every single animal that comes from this pound, so I feel comfortable in making this a constant. Another thing that you almost always do in PHP is create something called a constructor file, and this is how you would create that. This is a file that is called every single time you create a new object inside of PHP, and it must have this name, construct, and here I'm gonna allow them to set the age just by default. So everything that you keep inside of here is going to be called or run every single time you create a new object. So let's just say echo created, just so we have proof that this guy was actually called. And then here, I'm gonna show you this dash. And remember, this is a reference to the object you created. Set age to the value of age that was passed to it, just like that. And another thing that's used is inside of PHP, not often, but is used is what is called the set function and it can be used to perform error checking before assigning values to private attributes like age up here by default and how you create that is just function and if I don't set anything here it's automatically public and just say set attribute name and this sort of breaks encapsulation because it allows you to change private variables of any type using the set function. So um, you can use it if you want. This is why it's not often used. Here I'm gonna set it up so that you know who called it. Put that in there, put that in there. And then here again, this is how you would set the value for the attribute that it was uh, requested. So this, for example, would be age. So they would pass that they wanna change age to whatever value they have here. And this can be used as a universal function to change any attribute inside of the object. Again, it's not perfect form, but it is something that is used. So I'm explaining it to you so that if you ever see it, you'll actually know what it is. And underscore underscore get provides you access to any attribute, whether it's private or not. And I'm just going to copy this and paste that in there. Return the value of that attribute assigned to that object. Okay. I know this is kind of getting a little heady and a little bit complicated, but told you before, eventually it's going to get a little bit complicated. But this is probably one of the most complicated parts of the tutorial is understanding this stuff. And it's almost never covered in books for some reason. Don't know why. And here I'm going to show you what it looks like whenever you are actually trying to call for the set function. See, there's no mention of set inside of here. You're just simply calling to change. You want to change the value of a private attribute or variable inside of this object, which is normally something that would be blocked and would trigger an error. But since you have 
a set function created, this is automatically called instead of triggering an error. And it automatically assigns everything right, and it essentially breaks encapsulation to a certain extent, but it does just simply work. And this is how you would call the get function, just simply by referring to that private variable as if it wasn't private. And then finally, if you wanted to print out the value of the constant that's going to remain constant no matter how many different objects you create. Again, this is another weird sort of guy. You reference the name of your object followed by two colons, followed by the constant's name, copy, paste, and then file save and see if I typed in that all right. And I did, surprisingly enough. So basically what happens and in this code right here is a new object is created. I just kind of crack myself up whenever I don't make typos. But either way, this is when the construct file is called. And here is the construct file right upside here. And this is called every single time you create a new object. See, construct created right there. Then if we come down here, we set the, the value for Grover, but that doesn't do anything. So nothing shows up. Then we go in there and ask for the name for the object called dog and assign it to this. Then we set the age in the right way, the way you're supposed to. And here you can see I set the age to eight and then I set it to nine. And then here I said print out the value of age and you can see nine shows up, not eight. That's the reason we overrode that. And then here, like I showed you before, Grover gets printed and here you see how to get nine. And here you see how to get hold of the constant file that you defined here in this object. So that is a run through of a whole ton of different things in regards to object-oriented programming with PHP that is normally not covered anywhere. I mean, I know it's covered in other websites, but it's there's countless numbers of books that never go through this stuff. So thought you guys might be interested in it. Got lots of requests. If you, anything is not understandable, leave a question or comment below. And I'm going to continue explaining additional ways of using object-oriented programming with PHP in upcoming tutorials. Till next time.